In this lecture, we'll introduce point estimation. The first type of estimation that you're going to learn is maximum likelihood estimation. This is, uh, you've used it before, um, you just not contextualized it. So in this lecture, we'll help you to understand how to do max maximum likelihood estimation when you are given a set of data points. So let's consider a very simple example first, where we have a thumbtack. And we want to estimate the probability of the thumbtack landing nail up. So if you have such a problem, you ha if you are presented with this problem, how would you go about solving it? So then you take the thumbtack, first you gather data. So how to gather data for the thumbtack? Flipping it a few times, right? So in this um, slide, we have already flipped it five times and then we can see that the thumbtack lands nail up in three instances out of the five instances that we flipped it now using this you say the probability of the thumbtack landing nail up is three out of five and this simple you, it looks simple, but this is actually coming from maximum likelihood estimation. Why? Because the thumbtack follows a binomial distribution. We already have looked at binomial distribution in the in week two, and here we are going to use it to estimate the probability of the thumbtack landing nail up. So. Let's say the probability of the thumbtack landing nail up is theta. And the probability of the thumbtack landing nail on the side, or for simplicity, we'll just use tails, it is 1 minus theta. Now, because the thumbtack follows a binomial distribution, the flips, the, each of the flips that you record are, are IID. So what does that mean? IID is a common phenomenon and you are going to see this multiple times in this course and also beyond whenever you use machine learning. So IID corresponds to independent events and identically distributed. I, so IID, independent, identically distributed. So which means that one flip, so the thumbtack landing on its side here is not dependent on the thumbtack landing or, or nail up on the first. So this each of these flips that you see that you record is independent of each other. So it does not depend depend on what uh, outcome you saw before or does not depend on outcomes that you're going to see next this one this particular flip is going to be independent right so if you toss a coin it only depends on how you toss it and um it does not depend on the previous tosses or the following tosses so they are independent events and they're identically distributed which means that each of these flips follows a binomial distribution so because we already know binomial distribution we know that p of d given theta, d is data, d corresponds to data, and theta is what is the parameter that you want to estimate, right? So P of D given theta is equal to theta raised to alpha H 1 minus theta raised to alpha T. So what are alpha H and alpha T? Alpha H is number of heads and alpha T number of tails in your recorded data set right 
So now, because it follows a binomial distribution, you can get this. So this part, this part, this, this whole part, is coming from binomial distribution. Now, now we have the distribution. And we, use, we want to use the distribution to find the value of theta. So what are you interested in? You are interested in estimating theta, right? So you want to find theta, but you want to use this distribution to find theta. So you, we came up with a simple value by just looking at the data instances. But now we are going to understand how that value is coming. Where is it coming from? So this is how we actually arrive at that answer. By coming up with the distribution and then finding theta value using that, in, that distribution. So in order to do that, it makes sense that we have P of D given theta. Now we want to cho choose theta such that we maximize the probability of D. So how do we do that? We have to do an argmax over P of D given theta over theta. So this nothing, choosing theta to maximize probability of D, that is nothing but doing an argmax over theta in the function P of D given theta. And for simplicity, we often use log to, we have multiplications here, we want to make them sum, that easy to use argmax, and we often use log to do that. So it's an argmax over P of D given theta is as the same, is, is similar to calculating an argmax over log of P of D given theta. So that is why we have a logarithm in front. Okay, now for the next step. Now we have theta prime, which is so theta prime is the estimate of theta. MLE estimate of theta. So now we know that P of D given theta follows a binomial distribution. So we substitute this by this because it follows a binomial distribution. Now there is a log in front. So what we can do is we can split this into two terms. So right, argmax. Now argmax becomes d over d theta, right? So you want to differentiate with respect to theta. So what does this mean? differentiate with respect to theta and you want to differentiate and set it equal to zero to solve for theta so that's how you compute arc max now so we have this term inside where we take apply log and that becomes this, right? Log of theta raised to alpha h is nothing but alpha h log theta. And then this multiplication sign here translates to plus when log is applied. And then similarly, this term, the next term is alpha t log 1 minus theta. Right? And now... 
For the next step, we have alpha H d by d theta log theta. Because alpha H is a constant, it can be moved out of the differentiation. Differentiation of log of theta is 1 by theta. So that is what happens here. And then similarly, we have differentiation of log of 1 minus theta, which is the next term, 1 by minus, because there's a minus in front of theta, right? So minus 1 by 1 minus theta. So this term. And then we set this equal to 0. We solve for theta. And then we get theta MLE. Theta MLE is the estimated value of theta to be equal to alpha h by alpha h plus alpha t. So now what is alpha h? Alpha h is nothing but the number of heads, right? So number of heads by number of heads plus number of tails is so total number of recorded instances. So that is the estimated value of theta. So now we know when we toss a thumbtack five times and three times you get nail up and you estimate it to be three by five, the probability of the thumbtack landing nail up to be three by five, that when you're saying that, you are actually doing a maximum likelihood estimation. And you were doing it in this way. So now you know the procedure, you can apply it to any, any, problem that follows a binomial distribution. So you have a way to formulate P of D given theta as a binomial distribution and following that you can learn the value, estimate the value of theta.